Welcome to the show, Mid-American Gardeners. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna talk about all things landscape, gardening, vegetables, fruits, whatever we decide to do and whatever your questions are. So stay tuned, we're gonna have a great time together. My name is Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department on the Urbana-Champaign campus. However, there are two really intelligent folks next to me. Let's find out who they are and what their expertise is. And I'm gonna throw it over to you, Chuck Voigt. Well, thank you, Diane. Uh, <clears throat> I'm also in the Department of Crop Sciences in horticulture. Uh, my specialties are vegetables and herbs, but I, I covered pretty much the gamut. And I brought you something tonight. Yay. It's a white ginger. And if you see the flowers, uh, they're, they're kind of pretty, but the fragrance is amazing. Um, I can smell it, actually. Yeah, there, there, there is, and I, or there was, and I think there still is, a perfume called white ginger. And, and if it's anything like this, it, it's just fantastic. Uh, you know, fairly close relative to the, to the ginger that we, we, that we eat. Uh, I don't know that this one is inedible, but I don't know that it it's, has that, that, that flavor that, that we look for. It's kind of interesting because it you know it has rhizomes like like the one we see in the grocery store, and each one of these stalks has one big inflorescence that blooms over a period of time, and then and then kind of like a banana or like some other things it, that that particular stalk will die back and it'll send up a bunch more. So they're 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 kind of always growing and distorting their pots. It is a, a tropical, mm -hmm. so it it's it it would. You know, if it was acclimated, it would like to be outside in the summer, uh, but you need someplace warm to keep it in the winter. But it, it's just a fun plant. Um, so was that maybe 12 or 15 flowers? It looks like something like that. We're getting toward the end. Got two really looking two nice. Two really nice. You get a lot of smell. Uh, two <laughs> For just yeah. two. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you had a room full of these, it, it might start to be like paper whites. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a little <clears throat> too much. And it has good height, so that'd be very, uh, that'd be a good conversation starter in the garden or right. in a container yeah very yeah. nice and, and you, you can grow the, the the kind we eat as well uh, I've, I've picked up a rhizome at at the grocery store and if, if it looks pretty lively you, you treat it you don't rot it from too much water you can get it to sprout and and, and you know it, it we're not going to compete with tropical places but you, you could actually increase that and, and and have more ginger at the end of the season and feel like you'd really accomplish something. A new crop for the Midwest. <laughs> it would be fun. I mean, even if you didn't get a lot from it, it'd still be fun. Or if you had a, a, even a high tunnel greenhouse, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the heat of the summer, this would stand up to that pretty well and, and, and produce a lot of a tasty rhizome. Not this one, the, the edible one. Well, thank you for showing us ginger. Very interesting. All right. Well, we're going to go to our other panelists, and I'm going to introduce Dr. Bob Skirvin. Hello, I'm Bob Skirvin, and I also teach horticulture here at the, at the University of Illinois in Champaign. And my specialty is fruit crops and, and a lot of different things. And one of the things I, I love to do, I'm really good at it, I, I go to the grocery store <laughs> sometimes twice a day. I love to go to the grocery <laughs> store and all over the place. And I, and I love to see the sort of things that are in, in season. And this is the time of the year. We, I was debating, does it bring some apples in? If you don't know, this is apple season. There's the apples running them in right now. I got to go and get fresh apples, try some varieties you haven't tried before. But uh, this is one of the things that may, maybe you've never tried before. It's a kiwi fruit. Now, usually the kiwi fruits, you think about those, those big hairy things, you know, those, they're funny looking, and you don't quite know how to eat them. They're beautiful inside, they taste really good, and you're, uh, most people will take a skin them first and then just kind of scoop out the stuff inside. I eat hair and all. <laughs> <laughs> Cr Cr Might crunch well. them down, you get a little, little extra bulk on this. <laughs> and so, anyway, but, uh, but there's another kind, and, and I've only seen this time of year. And, and honest to God, I'm embarrassed to say it. I've only seen them in one store, and for the, for the last 10 years, I bought it from my students at one store at a Sam's Club. So I don't, I'm not advertising, I'm not, I'm not saying any, you know, you know, but they have them there, and I bought these the other day. And these are, are kiwi fruits, a so different species of kiwi fruit. Instead of being the big hairy ones, these are about the size of a grape, and they're smooth skin, and they taste delicious. They're really <laughs> good. They're the best fruits to eat in your whole life. 
and they're really, really, really nice. They're easy to pop in. Uh, one of my grad students is buying this thing and freeze them and eat them during the winter time. They kind of pop them in your mouth too. Like a frozen blueberry, but as much less messy. They are really good. Honest to God, they are really good. And so what you ought to do is go to your store. They probably undoubtedly have other, other places, but I know for sure they have a Sam's and they'll have them for several more weeks. So usually for like three or four weeks of this time of year and look for them. And this was just a little over $3 for a whole bunch of them here. And they're really good. You know, it'll experience you'll never, never regret. You'll, you'll, every year you'll be looking forward to wanting to go back and buy some more. They're really good. Well, and if you have, a, have room for a, a fairly aggressive vine, or actually two because right. they're male and female, uh, you could grow these here because they are, are yeah. fairly winter hardy. Right. Th yeah, this particular one is a, is a hardy, what they call a hardy kiwi. You, you, you'll see it, you can you get in the catalogs and see that and some of the stuff. But uh, <coughs> there, there are several different types of the hardy kiwi fruits. And, uh, and, uh, what, what, and usually they have to have a boy and a girl. You know. And so uh, what they'll do is the, the female plant, they take it smaller than the male plant, they'll actually let it grow like a, 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 something like a big pole. So then when the pollen goes, the pollen fall, falls down over, mm -hmm. the, over the female. <coughs> and you have to have both of them. Now, there, there are a couple of them that are sold that are have male and female on the same plant. And, uh, and we, we have them out at our farm, <coughs> and the females did real well. The male didn't do so hot, so mm. we, we haven't got babies yet. But. Someday, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get little puppies. You, know, you need right. a stronger male, <laughs> a more aggressive. Well, thanks, Bob, because uh, Chuck and I did uh, have a, a, just a taste before, and it, they are really, really good. Yeah, it, it's kind of a cross between a, a, a kiwi and, and a really sweet grape, mm -hmm. I think. It's, it's, very, it's got it's good sweetness. It's very good. good. It's really, you want, if you're worried about that hairy stuff, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry. It's not there. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting the urge to plant a couple of those vines now. Okay, report back. <laughs> All right, let's go to a Did You Know section next. Bamboo is the fastest growing woody plant in the world. It can grow 35 inches in a single day. Okay, let's go to the phone lines next, and we're going to start with line three. Jane has a question about red twig dogwood. Hi there, Jane. Jane, hi. Can you talk to us? I hear the TV. All right, Jane, listen to me and not the TV, and you can ask your question. Yes. There you go. Turn off your TV or just don't listen. All right. What's your question? Well, I have four uh, red twig dogwood bushes, and a little worm just placed the leaves and then they ate all, all the leaf off completely. Now, will they die? <laughs> well, I'm going to jump in and say no. They won't. It's, it's really terribly bad cosmetically. You know, it looks bad. But they will come back. Do you want to add? Well, I think defoliation this late in the season right. is, is, you know, might ruin their vigor a little bit. But, but basically, they've, they've stored all the energy they need for next year. So... Uh, the thing to do would be to figure out, you know, what it was that ate the leaves and maybe treat for it next year before it defoliates them. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of right now, I, it, it would just shock me if, if, if it even set them back very much, let alone killed them. They are really tough, the red ones and the kind of green <coughs> ones and yellowish ones. Uh, you might want to take a few stalks in the spring. They're really beautiful. Uh, well, they're used in winter containers too with evergreens, but you might take a few stalks and I think cutting back a few keeps them hardy and vigorous as well. So I'm going to say it's cosmetic, Chuck agrees, but it's just a shame, but they're going to drop their leaves soon anyway. So thank you for your call very much, Jane. Okay, let's go to Liz's question and it's about apples on line four. Hi, Liz. Hi. What, um, what's your I, question? I have I have an apple tree that is just really loaded with apples, and um, I'm not sure the variety. They're they're just now getting ripe. They're just the covered with uh, black spots, and um, almost looks like a mildew or something. Some of it washes off, and some of it doesn't. It seems to be in the skin. I'm wondering if was this something caused by the weather? And, uh, or is there anything I can do to prevent it for uh, next year? Well, you've 
you've called the right day. Okay, right. Bob. So, uh, Chuck and I were just talking. It, it's called sooty blotch, and it's a it's a fungal disease. It's on there, and it and and you're right. In some cases, uh, it's you can just take it, take it in your shirt and rub it rub it right off, and, and some of it will, will stay will stay there. It's really not poisonous. Is there you know? terrible problem is, but it certainly makes your apples look awful. And, and so, sometimes if you got that too, it, it, then you're gonna have some other, you might have some uh, little insects in there that are go, going through it, you might have that. Uh, really, it's not gonna hurt anything at all. But if you're trying to sell your apples, you're, you're taking farmer's market, and if it's, uh, most people will say, ooh, yucko, you know, <laughs> they don't want that. And if for, in, ter in terms of making applesauce or apple juice, or something, just go through and, and cu cut off the really bad parts and go ahead and make applesauce. It's okay and, mm -hmm. and it, w it won't hurt anything. And uh, wash, wash your fruits beforehand, but it's really just that. And then next year, which you need, you need to plan ahead, is there are some fungicides that would go on. I'm not sure exactly, I'm not the real fungicide guy, but, but earlier than, than now, midsummer. You take and put it on and try to control some of this, but but really it's not. I, one time here on TV, I brought in some apples like that to show what it looked like from our farms, and people said, "Oh, are they bad?" And I just ate one. So mm -hmm. you, you won't you won't die from that. But again, it's cosmetic, so yeah, it's make co some it's cosmetic and it, It'll upset some of your friends that you have ugly apples, but that's if, if you peel them for a pie, it really makes absolutely no. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, that's right. That's even <coughs> nobody, okay. Nobody will know. Well, thank you very much, Liz, for your question. Let's go next to Eleanor's question on line five about walnuts. Hi, Eleanor. Hi. What, we what have, have you got for us? We have a friend that gave us a large amount of, of walnuts, and they're green with the coating is still on the outside. Well, thank you very much, Liz. And so now um, I need to know, what do we do with these uh, to get them to the point where we can open them up and put them in the freezer? So you want to get through the... Right, well, uh, I would say if you have someplace squirrel proof, <laughs> um, That's true. put them out in a single layer and see if they go ahead and mature some more. Uh, usually it's really hard to get the, uh, the husk off at, at the green stage and until it develops that black tariness around the, around the nut, uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to get it off. Um, they may not be fully developed when they're, when they're still green. Uh, I know this summer uh, we haven't got as many heat units as we might have, so mm -hmm. um, it, especially in seedling walnuts, it seems to vary from tree to tree, uh, you know, how fast they ripen up nuts. Uh, I know at, at the home farm we have quite a number of them, you know, and, and one of them's had ripe nuts on it for two or three weeks. And then uh, another one that got struck by lightning and is no longer around used to have never get, never totally ripen them. Um, so it's, I don't know how well it's going to work, but but that's the best I can say is, is lay them out, uh, keep them keep them warm and away from critters, and uh, hopefully they'll go ahead and mature a little bit. But if if the if the if the husk stays really really tight on them, I'm not sure that there's a real uh, good possibility that they're going to be good. And then, of course, once you get it off, if, it, if you do get them to that stage, you want to, we always washed them off and then dried them for a few weeks so that the inside gets dried out well, then crack them, and then once they're picked mm -hmm. out, you can, you can put them in the freezer. And freeze and they, them. they keep really well in the freezer. Yes. <clears throat> well, good. I haven't had any at that stage. I have a lot of critters, <laughs> but <laughs> but that's great that someone shared. So hopefully that will work for you. Thank you very much, Eleanor. Well, let's go to Mary's questions about uh, question about tomatoes on line two. <coughs> Hi, Mary. I'm getting tomatoes, at least on one plant, that are getting circular cracks on the top just about before they get ripe or just right as they get ripe. <coughs> uh, I'm just wondering what, if anything, I can do to prevent it, and or if I get them a little green before they crack and bring them in, will that work? Um, concentric cracks and to some degree radial cracks, which are the ones that radiate out from the stem, uh, I think both are, are set up by uh, a period of, of drier weather followed by a fairly heavy rain, 
which you get a, a, an influx of water in there and the skin uh, on certainly on some varieties uh, can't take that and it, and it, and it cracks. It seems to be worse at, at, the, at, the, uh, at the stem end. Um, probably if, uh, you know, earlier in the season, it, a mulch that, that evens out the water supply. Um, if we get, you know, I know this has been a really wet season for us, but we did have about a three week period when, when we started to see some water stress. If, if you see that happening, I know it's hard to water in a season where you've been flooded for, for weeks and weeks on end, <laughs> but actually if that has happened, it really sets things up to need water when they get dry because the roots haven't penetrated. They don't have the root system that they would if they'd been under uh, water stress a little earlier in the season. So even out the water supply, um, mulch them, uh, it's probably a little late for that. And if you have mature greens that don't have it and, and you, you want to, you could, you could probably pick them and ripen them off the plant. They're probably going to be a little bit more like the commercial kind because that's, you know, mm -hmm. when they grow them in West Mexico, that's what they do. When, when they go from green to sort of a white color, uh, that's mature green. Uh, vine ripe to them is if, it's, if, there's, if there's just a speck of color right around the blossom. Um, so if, if, if you have lots of them, kind of like the, the cosmetic thing on the, on the apples, uh, you just cut it off and, and live with it. Um, but if you want to try to prevent it, especially next year, uh, maybe change varieties, uh, make sure the water supply is, you know, you can't stop it from being too much, but don't let it get to be too little. Mulch them and uh, that okay. should help. Yeah, that's happening to mine, but I just yeah. Yeah. trim them off. And mine out at the research farm. so good. Yeah. We've waited so long thing. for them, but I'm just eating them. Well, thank you, Mary, because that I think you're not alone with that. All right, let's go to a cherry tree question. This is from Sam on line six. Hi, Sam. Hi. About a dozen years ago, we set out the, the cherry tree beside our back deck, and it had grown to uh, maybe 10 feet high. And uh, uh, this spring, it, it was covered in blossoms, just beautiful, and we had lots of cherries from it. And then it began to drop leaves, and it is almost devoid of leaves at this point. I don't know whether that tree is dying. Uh, my, my wife thinks we should just go ahead and remove it. But. My sisters did the same thing. It's just when it was so wet and, and so humid for so long, leaf disease got started in them really early, and, and the leaves started falling. Uh, I would say don't don't do anything right now. Next spring, go out and and and, and uh, you know do a little investigating. Maybe run a thumbnail on some of the twigs, see if it's green under the bark, because I think it's a it, it, that's just an effect of of the weather that we had this year. And if next year is better, you know it may may have hurt them a little because they started falling pretty early, but. I, I don't think it should be dead unless unless it was in a position where it was just inundated with water for several weeks. And a lot of trees are showing that stress early, not just fruit trees. Yeah. So it's a wait and see <clears throat> sort of year. Well, we're going to go from uh, cherries that have defoliated to uh, pumpkins that are moldy. We've got to see about this on line three. Hi there. Hello. I had a question about my pumpkins. In fact, I didn't even plant them. I just mm -hmm. dropped the pumpkin and the seed on the ground, and, and this spring they came up without even being planted. So uh, I've let them vine off, and the vines have turned dead, and I pick them, bring them in, and then they start molding. A white mold covers the pumpkin. So it's when it's inside. Yes, after I've picked it. And in fact, the stem is very um, gray looking. It's uh, really died down. The ones that you buy at the market, the stems are still green. So I wondered if it was too much moisture in the pumpkin. I th it sounds a bit like powdery mildew to me. Uh, if, if you're not 
the difference between the ones in the market and the ones you have are commercial growers. Uh, a, are growing varieties that, that are mildew resistant, and then B, blasting them with fungicide to keep it from getting started. I think the, 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 the mildew was, was started outside, and then when you come inside, uh, it, it, it just went ahead and, and finished mm -hmm. what, it was, what it had already started. So it was already on the pumpkin. It just I, I think it I think it must have been had perfect conditions indoors. Yeah, yeah, because because powdery mildew is is the one fungus that doesn't like free water, you know, actual water. It likes humidity, but it doesn't like doesn't like water. Water actually washes the spores off, and it can't mm -hmm. develop if 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 it's uh, if 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 you get water on it. So uh, sadly, I think probably. Uh, we're past the point where you can do much about that. So it might be... Go, go buy if, a pumpkin there. A I was going to say, of, it uh, might be helpful for the folks in the industry. If, if you think it's something one. about bringing them inside, maybe pick them and, and put them in a sheltered area on a porch or something, mm -hmm. although squirrels and things tend to like to come and chew holes in them. But, um, you know, try if you have more of them, try them somewhere else. And see if see if you can get them cured a, a little better to get them dried out. Okay, so we're sorry that's <clears throat> kind of sad news, but but hopefully if you leave them outside, it'll be better for the next ones. Well, I have to have the sweet potato question next. It's on line four because we have such a sweet potato guru here at the table. So let's talk to Carolyn. Hi there, Carolyn. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, now, I have a sweet potato plant in a hanging pot, and it's just gorgeous. And we go to Texas in the winter time, and I'm wondering when it turns cold, if I cut that back and dug the roots, I could get it to live, you know, replant it. So is this ornamental or, or an actual sweet potato? No, it, it's ornamental. It's ornamental. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. I have grown the ornamental types in, in the trials right alongside the regular ones. Um, and, and they'll make some half decent roots. They tend to crack a little more. They're, they're certainly not as productive. But I always have trouble getting the roots of those to last through the winter. Uh, I'll go back and, and, and you know, Beauregard and, and, and the actual uh, sweet potatoes, uh, you know, cure and, and I've got some of those from last year that are still edible, but uh, the ornamentals not so much. Um, I would say at the end of the season, dig them up, eat them, and then buy a new plant next year because they, they grow so fast uh, and they're, they're pretty widely available. Uh, you can keep them in a pot, but if you're leaving, you yeah. can't do anything. Yeah, you, you could maybe pot one up and take it with you wherever you're headed. Um, but that that gets to be a little bit of a... It takes pl uh, space and you'd have to really like it. But they're so available. They are. I think you could probably start again, yeah. but... I, I don't know, around camp, I go and just snip off a little piece. <gasps> they root so easily. Well, yeah. there is that tip, but you didn't hear it here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you, they are readily you, available and easy to grow. You would probably want to start maybe a little earlier than when they set them out on campus anyway, so... <laughs> so it's just a thought. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your question because you never know. It might it might have worked just great, but when you're leaving town, it may not work well outside of a container. Well, let's go to our mag quiz next. When were the first garden hoses made? A, 600 BC, B, 200 BC, C, 400 B.C., D. 700 A.D. C. 400 B.C. All right, we have a little time, so we're going to talk about what to do right now in the garden, fall gardening. Who wants to start? I do. Okay. It's really close to my heart. It's time to plant garlic, at least now and in, into, into the first half of, of next month. So whenever you see this, if, it, if you're in late September, early October, uh, up to mid-October, even into the first of November most years, garlic's a fall bulb, just like a daffodil, just like a tulip. You want to get it planted in the ground 
so that it gets rooted, maybe gets a sprout up to where it's just about at ground level, and then winter happens, and then the first thing in the spring when the frost goes out of the soil, it's up and growing, and, and you're capturing uh, those, those days of late winter and, and early summer, and, and spring planted garlic can never catch up with that. So um, that would be my, my recommendation now. And you mentioned tulips and other bulbs, so that would be my recommendation. Yep. There's a lot to do, cleaning up, getting things ready to go for the spring. Lots of Leave some of the grasses, though. Don't cut those back. It's lots, lots of weeds that came up when it was Lots wet. of weeds. Well, with that, we're going <laughs> to leave you with thinking about weeds. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.